Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. We're going to be solving the first question from the third chapter of the Hitler textbook. And we have the members of a truss that are pin connected at joint O. We need to determine the magnitude of F1 and F2 for equilibrium condition. And we also know that the theta in the figure is 60 degrees. So what we're going to do in here, since we are in equilibrium, the sum of all forces in both x and y has to be zero. So we're going to get two equations from our equilibrium condition. And we have two unknowns of F1 and F2. So two unknowns, two equations, we should be able to find F1 and F2. So let's start with each of these. Let's, let's go with sum of all forces in x direction. This would be our positive direction for x. So we can see that the F1 and F2, the X component acts along positive X axis. And what we need to keep in mind is that uh, our FX is not always the cosine of that angle. What we care about is the angle with X axis or Y axis. So for example, if we look at F2, we'll see that we have the angle with Y axis. And if we look at this right triangle, the X component, which is this one would be since we have this angle 70 degrees, it will be the sine of 70 degrees. So we have positive. So F2 sine of 70 degrees. For F1, we know theta is 60 degrees. And since we have the angle with x axis, this will be plus F1 cosine of 60 degrees. And we have the other two forces along negative x-axis so we have negative sign for both let's start with the five kilonewton force so minus five we have the angle with x-axis so cosine of 30 degrees and same for the seven kilonewton uh, we have some dimensions in here if we look at this right triangle for finding the x component we have to pick the horizontal side of this right triangle divided by hypotenuse so horizontal component is four and hypotenuse is five so basically it will be if we call this angle alpha this little angle here is alpha two so we will have the magnitude of force times cosine of alpha cosine of alpha would be 4 divided by 5 or the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. So one quick easy way if you're looking for the x component, uh, find the horizontal side of that triangle and divide it by the hypotenuse. Uh, we'll do the vertical component for the y component. That's pretty much it. This will be equal to 0. And let's just rewrite this equation based on the values that we have. So we have the value of sine of 70, which is going to be 0 0.94 F2 plus cosine of 60, we know is 0.5. F1 is equal to, we're going to bring these two on the other side. So we have 5 times cosine of 30 plus... 7 times 4 divided by 5. And we're going to bring it on the other side. It will be positive 9.93. We found the first equation. And let's move on to the sum of all forces in Y. And we can consider that our positive. Let's go with the F2. This time we have F2 cosine of 70 degrees. Uh, F1, the Y component is downward, so we have a negative sine minus F1. This time, instead of cosine, we have sine of 60 degrees. Uh, the 5 kilonewton, the Y component is upward, 5 times sine of 30 degrees, and the 7 kilonewton is negative. This time, we have the vertical side, which is 3 over hypotenuse, is equal to 0. So let's rewrite our equation. Cosine of 70 would be 0.34 F2. Sine of 60 is going to give us 
zero point eighty seven F one is equal to and on the right side we have three times seven twenty one divided by five minus five sine of thirty sine of thirty is point five so divided by two will be two point five and if we just multiply this by two we're gonna get four point two minus 2.5 or 1.7 so that was the first equation the second equation is 34 f2 minus 0.87 f1 is equal to 1.7 so now we have two equations two unknown and all we need to do in here is just to solve this equation so let's get rid of the f1 so we have to make something 0.5, which means we have to multiply this equation by 0.5 divided by 0 0.87. So 0.5 divided by 0.87. So it's going to be 0 0.575, 0 0.575. So let's multiply that 0.34 times 0.575 it's going to be 0 0.196 f2 minus and that's the 0.5 that they were looking for and also 1.7 times 0 0.978 so now we can add these two equations the first equation is what we had in the first line 0 0.94 F2 plus 0.5 F1 is equal to 9.93. So if we add these two, we get rid of these two, and we have 0.196 plus 0.94. And on the right side, we have 9.93 plus, plus 0.978. 10.908 and we're going to divide that by 1.136 so we're going to get f2 9.6 kilonewtons and now that we have f2 we just have to put it in one of these equations so 0 0.94 let's go with the second one f2 9.6 plus 0.9 f1 is 9.93 so 9.6 times 0.94 and 9.93 minus answer is going to be 0.5. F1 is equal to 0 0.906. We're going to divide it by 0.5. And our F1 will be 1.81 kilonewtons. And the final answer for this question. Hope everything was clear. We're covering three different textbooks on this channel. Feel free to check out the playlist and let me know if you guys have any specific problem that you want me to cover it in the next videos. And you guys take care. I'll see you in the next one.